And I thought my palms didn't have any sauce on them. So I was like, oh, sure, I could wipe my, you know, there was somehow sauce. Oh, no. <laughs> And thanks for joining us for this next segment of Heat in the Helix. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Tom Nicholas. Uh, Dr. Nicholas is a senior research scientist in the Quinlan Lab here at the University of Utah's Department of Human Genetics. He's also an analyst for the Utah Center for Genetic Discovery, uh, who works on computational genomic analysis. And as we know, that is a major factor in the advancement for genomic medicine. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Nicholas. Well, thank you. I'm excited to be here. And I, and, I, and I stutter with the um as I look to see the next sauce we're about to eat here is the smoked ghost. Uh, that, yeah, that's, that's going to be a good one there. And, and, and it sounds like you might have had a little bit of a tortilla chip experience, but not, not the full blown one. I, I think that's accurate. I gave, it a, I gave it a quick test, but this is going to be um, orders of magnitude more substance. <laughs> well, I'll be right there with you. And if that's the case, I guess we better... Uh, Better just get into it. Better just jump on it. Huh? All right. So today, uh, folks, we actually have wings. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> Real deal. Uh, so, um, yeah, double batter, just toss in a fresh batch. It smells hot. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not messing around. This is a bit more. <laughs> this is a bit more than a, the dab on a tortilla chip. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Oh yeah. There's the hiccups. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, why? Oh, you're committing. You're going all the way. All right. I got it. I, I got. got it. I got two more right here, man. I can't oh. close my lips too well. But. <laughs> yeah. That. That's it a lot differently than a lot of the sauces I've had. Uh, yeah, my my <laughs> my breath is uh, <laughs> I can't breathe without feeling it. <laughs> well, good thing you're doing most of the talking. So the improved sequencing technologies have brought immense change to how we approach genetics and genomics. And we just heard about the impact of big data when we talked to doc, uh, Dr. Uh, Deb Nixon, Dr. Deer. Um, and this data has to be interpreted somehow. So how do you best take advantage of all this, uh, this raw data? Well, just like the wing that we just enjoyed, you have to, you, you embrace it. Yes. <laughs> you embrace the fact that you have all of this data because that's a really, uh, it's an extremely helpful thing to have. There is a, it, it's, it sometimes feels like a burden having so much data, but in reality, uh, we want to have more. Um, specifically, the more data you have, the better you're enabled to start identifying patterns that exist in genomes. And that's really crucial. And it's crucial in a couple of ways. One, by better identifying these patterns, you're better equipped to down the road generate better data and, 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 and improve our ability to get good. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Every now and then it really just kicks in there. It's not forgiving. It's just it's lingers. But these patterns are also really helpful to help us to be able to understand what is really common in all of our genomes versus what is more rare and more unique to an individual's genome. And that becomes uh, really useful uh, in terms of interpreting and making diagnoses, where if you're dealing with a, a rare disorder, for example, you want to be able to understand, well, this is something that I've never seen before in a genome. Um, but the patterns themselves also in, help us refine um, the technologies that we use to better, to better identify some of these variants as well. And so the more and more data that we can collect and keep adding to it, the better our ability is going to be to produce good data, interpret what is happening on an individual level um, in that data, 
but then also improve our methodologies and our workflows, our pipelines to, in, to overall improve this experience um, uh, altogether. Yeah, I, I do have to say after listening to you talk, I felt, I felt a little hungry. Um, <laughs> oh, you wanna, you wanna I, dive I don't know. I, the next one? I was just, I was just so, so enthralled, I, just, I have to I have, to have a snack. We want to keep this puppy on full, you know, and <laughs> you know it's 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 very spicy. Um, but I'll, I'll hand it to 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 it. Uh, it it's a pretty tasty sauce though too. I'm gonna say, Bat Dogs never fails on flavor. Not to be their spokesman or something, but I've been very <laughs> impressed. So when I first began in in genomic science, it was you know sequencing a genome was still something that was. It was not trivial, not not to say that it is now, but it was it was something that you you it took time, and it might be a matter of months or so before you would get that data back. But uh, it's remarkable to me that now I work on projects where we have individuals who get um, enrolled into NeoSeq, for example, and within a couple of days, uh, within about a day of blood being drawn from those individuals, I'm analyzing their genomes. You know, just the other day, I was working on an analysis project where uh, it was a it was a trio, and this was a mother and a father and their child. And in this case, the mother and the father each had, I'm sorry, the mother and the and the child each had uh, a certain condition, uh, 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 of varying levels of severity. So I, I had the opportunity to analyze these genomes, and I identified this really rare and complex rearrangement that was common in the mother and the child's uh, genome. Uh, it was extremely encouraging because this was presumably a, a diagnostic variant that we were identifying. It's always really exciting when you can look at somebody's genome and start to have an idea of, hey, I think I have an understanding of what's going on here and why this is happening to you. So that was a really, uh, 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 really, it's always a really satisfying moment to be able to, to pull those things out of the analyses that we do. Furthermore, uh, you know, I, I mentioned that the type of analysis that I was working on was looking at this rearrangement, which is a really complex and rare event that takes place in a genome. It's a hard kind. It's a hard type of mutation to identify. Uh, long read sequencing is something that we're all really excited about. It, it 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 appears to be kind of the next step or the next evolution of sequencing. When we sequence a genome, there are parts of that genome that are difficult for us to resolve and to to clearly understand what's happening in them. Typically we use uh, what's called a short read uh, sequence. And that's like you'd have a if, a, if a book was your genome, it's like you've now taken all of the pages out of that book, you've ripped them out of the book, and then you've torn up all of the pages. And then you're gonna start trying to look at the words that are on all those bits of paper and start to put the puzzle back together. Long read technology improves things by helping us so that we're not having to tear those pages up into such small pieces anymore. We might even just rip the pages out and keep the pages intact, so to speak. And that suddenly makes the, the task of rebuilding that book a lot simpler, a lot, a lot, a lot easier to do, which is gonna just be vital to being able to resolve a lot of the areas that are more ambiguous and puzzling. That is very exciting, <clears throat> very captivating too. And I look forward to learning more as, as you progress with this, this analysis and many others. And thank you very, very much for, for joining us for Heat and the Helix. I don't know about you, but my face is on fire. I think I, I, think um, I brought you to tears too. Is that Oh, it was so emotional. I, <laughs> I got my lame is moment soon, you know? <laughs> oh, wow. Anyway, it's been, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thanks for being a sport and diving into two hot bleeding wings. And for everyone joining us today, thank you very much. We have a few more segments coming up and uh, thank you for all those who have supported us here uh, for you giving day. Again, that is in support of the Penelope program uh, of which uh, has a lot of connection to uh, computational genomics and uh, quick analysis. So again, uh, uh, thank you so much for joining us, Tom. And uh, yeah, we'll hopefully see you soon. You bet. Thank you. I enjoyed it very much. Thanks so much. To learn more and hear the full interview, follow the audio-only link in the description below.